Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk and today we are going to have a look at doing the um, disc, swap, disc change um, mod on this, so basically the disc swap mod. Um, I think a lot of people call it an ABBA um, mod or an ABBA mod. Uh, basically what it does is it allows you to swap between having the internal or the external um, drive as um, DF0, basically the main um, boot drive that most there's a lot of Amiga software won't boot off an external drive, it wants to boot off the internal um, floppy drive. Um, what this does, it allows you basically to swap between um, having the internal or the external as the main um, boot, dr boot drive. The reason I'm doing it is because I have a GoTech um, as an internal drive and every now and again I do want to boot uh, actual original discs on this Amiga. Um, Amiga. So, I can uh, use my external drive. I've got a, I've got an external drive here, just a normal um, three and a half inch. And basically, after this mod, I can put a game in there, flick a switch over, and this will become the main boot drive. I flick the switch back, and my internal GoTech will be the um, main boot drive. Um, it's quite a common mod on things like 500s and 500 pluses because it's dead easy on them. It's um, I think it involves pulling one of the CIA chips, uh, bending a few legs out, um, or putting a little adapter board in and put, mounting a switch and that's it. Uh, because the 600, and this goes for the 1200 as well, I'm not sure about the mod on the 1200, it might be very slightly different to this, uh, but it's, it, I think it's a similar type of thing. Uh, basically because it's um, all surface mount, you can obviously lift the tracks and do it like you would do there. But someone has come up with um, with a way of doing it. Now I come across this through watching a video on um, Miss Mad Lemon's um, channel, where she watched a guy um, an, I an Irish uh, Amiga convention, basically doing this mod. Um, and she, what she did, she put a PDF uh, that he used to do the mod, uh, a link in her um, video, and I'll do the same. I'll put a link um, down in the description on this video to this um, PDF. And this basically explains how to do um, the mod. But um, the guy that did it in, um, I, I wish I could remember what he was called, but the chap that did it in, in the video that Miss Mad Lemon um, did, did it very slightly different to this and I'm actually going to do it the same way as he did it because I think it's a little bit um, a little bit better and well I'll show you how I'm like I said I'll, I'll show I'll tell explain how it does it in this and um, then I'll show you how I'm actually going to do it um, what I'll do I'll, I'll just quickly go through basically what this involves doing uh, what we've got to do we've got to take a resistor out now this is the only really tricky part of the um, of the modification, it is resistor. Um, let me see which resistor it is. It's resistor E five nine five, and it's one of the resistors down here. Um, when I when I get you set up on the over, overhead shot, I'll um, point in a bit better, a bit closer. But basically, it's between the external floppy drive connector there and the floppy disk header. Uh, there's um, a row of surface mount resistors, and it's like the um, how many how many in is it? Well, we've got two capacitors at the end. If we count them, uh, it's um, one, two, three, four, five, six components in, and uh, that's the resistor that we want to um, take out. Once we've taken that out, basically in here it calls for you to um, solder two two wires to the two pads of the resistor. Now that's where um, we're going to differ slightly. Because it's never good soldering to a tiny little pad like that and they are tiny tiny little pads. I mean nine times out of ten you'd probably get away with it but there's just that one time when you're going to pull that wire and you're going to rip that pad straight off the board and cause you know, all kinds of damage. Especially when there there is an alternative, and um, this is what the um, chap on, like I said, on the video did, and this is what I'm going to do. We we'll flip the board over. Once we've taken that resistor out, we can actually um, solder onto some pins on the bottom here. We can solder onto the third pin in on the first row of the disk drive connector, and we can solder into the um, sixth pin on the second row in of the um, floppy drive header and that will give us exactly the same two connections as if we'd um, soldered onto them pads 
and obviously soldering onto a, uh, a pin like that is going to be a lot better um, if it did the way it did pull the most it's ever going to do is just pull off that pin it's not going to lift a pad it's not going to rip a track or anything like that which is what the potential is if you um, just go onto the two pads um, left by a way you've removed the resistor so we need to take the resistor out to break the circuit but we're actually going to pick up the connections from a different place that's the only thing I'm going to do different to um, how it's um, done in the um, instructions here that we found switch wise um, initially I was going to use a little toggle switch but I searched through all my switches and I couldn't find a double pole double throw toggle switch so what we're going to use is it's a double pole double throw it's exactly the right switch that we need but it's just a slide switch instead at first I thought well it's not going to look right but actually with the where I plan to mount it in the case and everything um, I think it's going to work out really quite nicely that you're not actually really going to be able to see it unless you go looking for it on the computer put it that way anyway what I'm going to do now is I'll get you um, set up on my other tripod so you're looking over the board and we'll, uh, we'll do the mods to the board and then we'll um, there's, there's a mod to do to the drive the drive cable the cable from the um, pin header here to the GoTech or floppy or whatever was in there basically the main floppy drive cable um, we've got to do a modification to that and then we've got to wire the switch up which is going to go inside the side of the computer but first thing we'll do is we'll do the work on the uh, actual 600 board itself so um, I'll get you paused and I'll just get you set up on the other tripod so you can um, see this a little bit better okay let's get uh, let's get started on this I'll get you zoomed into the place where we're um, we're gonna work I'll zoom you down. Oops, here we come. With any luck, I can get this to focus a bit better. Right, basically, what we're doing, if we look down. Hopefully, you can see this. I can't see very well on the um, on the little screen on the camera. But basically, if we um, count down from here, so we've got a capacitor, a capacitor, then one, a resistor, a resistor another resistor and that resistor there with the 95 next to it is the resistor that we need to re need to remove now we've got a couple of options here uh, we could tape it off with cotton tape or some um, foil or something we could use some hot air and lift it out that way but I think we should be able to get that out just using the um, soldering iron if we're really careful and it does mean that people you know, perhaps don't have the hot air um, equipment could actually attempt this so I'm going to try and just see if we can um, get that resistor out of there just using the um, just using the soldering iron so I'll get, I'll get a bit of fresh solder because we'll probably have to just use a little bit of extra solder to do, um, achieve this we'll see we'll get the iron Ow. And I just burnt myself on the iron So what we're going to do, now this is the resistor in question that we want to take off, so I'm just going to add a little bit of solder to each side of it, there we go, that, you see how easy that was, literally just put a little bit of extra solder on there, heated it up and it just flicked it off, that actually came off a bit easier than, <laughs> a little bit easier than I was expecting it to, but um, yeah that, that's really all there is to it that's all we wanted to do was just knock that um, knock that resistor off the board I said it would have had we could have used heat for that and um, but we'd have had to captain tape or at least foil tape off that and that um, there else would have ended up would have um, risk damaging it the other problem with hot air is if you've got it set a bit too high and you go in there you risk shifting all these resistors and it'd be a hell of a mare to get them all um, set and lined back up again um, we did it quite nice and easily there with the um, just with a soldering iron uh, we've not left any bridges or anything um, we've left a bit of solder on them pads which we could perhaps wick off but um, to be fair they don't look bad at all I'm just going to leave them as they are I mean if you ever wanted to revert this the nice thing about this mod is it's completely reversible because you're not cutting a track or anything if we wanted to reverse it we could take the wires that we're just about to attach off the back back off we could put a resistor back on there and that's it the mods reversed 
we're not actually doing any um, cutting to the board at all. What we'll do, we'll spin the board over now, and I'll show you where we're going to connect these two, um, these next two wires to. I went rummaging round in my um, scrap um, junk TVs, and I pulled out some of this cable, so, um, one of the internet interconnect cables out of a scrap um, LCD TV. So I'm going to pinch a couple of this. It's a, it's a nice cable. It's quite quite flexible and springy but it's sold is okay so um, it's actually ideal for this mod um, I'm going to take two different colors just so I can differentiate which wires which I mean you could put a label on it and use both the same color of wire but I think personally I like to just um, identify which one's which and this makes a nice easy way of um, a nice easy way of us doing it Have my side snips um, pinned off to there. They are. So we've got oh, two pieces of wire here. We will need another few bits of wire, but we'll start with these. Um, we'll start with these two because these are what we're going to use to. Um, solder onto the bottom of the board once we've got these sorted obviously I'll do them nice and long and we'll end up um, cutting them down a bit and cutting them to length now I've tinned that one up already as you can um, as you can see I'll just tin up the um, I'll just tin up the other one Tin this wire up, and then we're ready to um, ready to connect them into position. Okay, that's it. That's that soldered in. Right. So basically, our first wire, which we'll call this the first wire. What we want to do is we want to solder it onto the third pin from this end of the disk drive controller in. So that's pin to third in which is that pin there so all we need to do there we go that's connected there and you can see that so that's connected onto the third pin there and the next wire needs to connect onto the sixth pin along from this end on the second row back from the um, disk drive connector, so that's second row one, two, three, four, five, and six. Let's just count that in again. One, two, three, four, five. It's that wire there that we need to solder it to. So again, we just um, solder that into position. Let's get that. There we go. Just try and get that to lie flat between those two other um, connections there, so it's um, going to be nice and nice and easy. And that's basically the mod. That's the mods to the board done. Now the rest of the mods are thing to things like the case and. Um, oops. Excuse me. I just dropped something in my um, soldering iron. Then could have had a bit of a fire there. Right, like I said, that's basically the mods to the board done. The other mods are to the um, case and obviously to her um, fitting the switch. So, what my plan is, I've soldered those two wires on there and I'm going to basically bring them through like that. Because I am planning to put the shielding back on this. So I'm going to um, basically sneak the wires through like that. And uh, then put the shielding back on because of how I've soldered them nice and flat on the bottom there and the fact that the shielding that I've got has got a plastic, um, basically a plastic liner in it I've not got any worry um, for them two connections to short out on anything because they're no higher than the original actual um, connections on the uh, solder points on the board right so what I do have to do, I just put the board somewhere safe Try and zoom you out a little bit. Oops, that's the wrong way. There we go. 
the first thing I am going to have to do is I'm going to have to make a slight modification to this um, metal shielding. I know a lot of people just throw the shielding away, but um, I want to try and preserve it as much as possible. I mean, <clears throat> I very much doubt I'm ever going to put a top shielding on this um, thing. I don't even I don't even think I have one, even a spare one. Um, but it, it's nice to have the um, bottom shield in there if, no, if nothing else. But where I'm planning to fit the um, switch, that little bit of metal there is going to be in the way. So what I need to do, I need to remove that little piece of uh, the shield in there. So I've got some, um, these are basically like a heavy duty pair of scissors. And these should be thick enough, these should be strong enough just to cut, basically cut this piece of shielding off without doing any other damage to the case. So let's see. Yeah. You can see there. We can cut. Cut to the end like that. Now I should be able to just cut down and leave that. Because I literally only need that piece off there. So we cut down there. Like that. Should be able to remove that little corner. So it, this all depends on where you fit um, the switch. There's plenty of places in the case you could fit it where you wouldn't have to do that. There's plenty of places in the case you know, where you could just perhaps drill through the plastic, especially if you want to put it in the top piece of the case. But I specifically want to fit it in the bottom piece of the case, basically so I can um, basically so um, I can take the top of the case off if I'm um, working on it. All I have to do is disconnect the um, keyboard, and I can take the whole top of the case off. I'm not constrained by some wires um, going between the board and the top of the case. Uh, right now, I've got that snipped off. I think what I'll do is I'm going to mount the um, I'm going to mount the board back in. Let me just see if I can get you up a little bit higher. Oops. There we go. That's a bit better, isn't it? You can actually see what I'm doing now. Right. So what we're going to try and do is mount this board. Now I've chopped that little bit off back in the case and make sure that the white the two wires there are coming out in exactly the right place that I want them. So we'll get them at the bottom there, we'll slide that in. And just want to see whether we've got enough enough clearance for this to actually work. Just drop that in. And there's just enough clearance between the connect the back of the um, metal work there, this connector. When the connector is actually screwed in place just to get the wires out without actually properly pinching them so I'm really pleased with that I'll spin this round and we'll get the um, we'll get the little screws back in the back and then we'll look at um, the modifications to the case and then we can actually look at wiring the switch up and um, doing the mods to the disk drive right so let me find my uh, little pot with all the um, We've got the pot. That's got all the um, electrolytics that I've um, removed from this computer. They're all the bad ones. We'll just put the uh, put the ground the shielding back on properly. Come on, screw in. I can't find my little driver that's meant for these. I do actually have a proper nut spinner for these, but I can't for the life of me find what I've done with it. I think most people just use pliers. Use the fingers to get them in and then, then nip them up with pliers, but I do I do actually have the proper little nut spinner for them, if I can find it ever. Right, where's my where's my long nose? Or even these will do. Right. Sort of tight tighten these up and just make sure that we do have enough clearance on them and um, two wires there in fact it looks just nice that because there's about a mil and a half clearance and this cable's about a millimeter so it works out just right that should be able to screw all these I'll have to just get this to the end of the um, end of the table and use the end of the table to uh, squeeze it in place tighten 
up and then we'll just check that we've not completely pinched them cables. No, we've still got a bit of a bit of play on them cables, that's what we want. So we don't want to pinch them hard against the board and the um, shielding. But that's just right, they just come up nicely then. Pleased with that. Put the next. In fact, you don't need to see me screw all these in place, so um, I'll be back as soon as I've just got all these um, all these screws in place and we can have a look at the mods to do to the actual um, case itself, so back in a sec. We're back and as you can see I've got all the um, just little mounting screws in the back of the uh, in the back of the shielding fixed back into position, so I'll go and get the bottom of the case and we'll just size up where we're going to actually um, mount this switch to. We'll stick this back in its. Um, we're going to stick it back in its case just for a second. This one's being a bit awkward. Just a sec. Do I have to go in from the other way? Can't remember now. Perhaps I have to go in the other way and put them in first. Yeah, I think I do. There we go. That's the board back in its back in position. Just so, basically, just because I want to um, eyeball up exactly where we're going to have enough room for the switch, and yeah, that's going to work nicely. Basically, the switch is going to go there underneath the disc drive, so you're not going to be able to see it. You're basically just going to be able to feel for it. So what I need to do is I need to take out some plastic um, underneath here. What we will do, we'll just take a, um, a pen or a pencil and just really roughly mark out where we're going to, um, where the switch is going to go. So the switch is going to sit about, the switch is going to sit about there. So we mark, right there. And then we mark where the end of the throw of the switch is. Because obviously we're going to need enough room for the switch to actually um, switch. So basically what we need to do is on the side of the computer in that position there is we need to drill it out, cut out a little slot for that switch to, um, for that switch to fit into. It's one of these, if we'd have used a toggle switch, we'd have just had to drill one little, um, one little hole. That, is, that would have um, done the job. Using this um, slide switch makes, um, makes cutting the hole a little bit more involved. But I think the end result will actually um, look this tiny little bit better, actually. I'm just going to get that out of the way while we work on the bottom of the case. So basically what we're going to do is on that side there we're going to mark them holes that I've just um, roughly marked on the top on there then cut out the little oblong that the switch is going to stick through uh, we'll have to drill two other small little holes just to mount the switch and um, basically that's where it's going to live um, so it'll basically be underneath the GoTech drive um, I think that's probably the neatest, um, neatest place to actually have it in this computer so, I don't know how much of this you're going to actually see because I'm going to have to eyeball myself. I mean the switch is going to be on a, it's not going to be flat the switch, it's going to be on a little angle. But that's not going to matter because you're literally going to be able to feel your finger up the handle, feel the switch and flick it in either direction that you want it. So, I think that's going to work out really nicely. So what I've got to do now, basically I've got to drill, I don't need the anti-static strap on at the moment because I don't think touching this is going to cause any problems. Uh, what I need to do basically is drill and then file out where the switch is going to fit there. Um, what I could do with doing is just finding a slightly better pen so I can uh, mark... mark exactly where I've got to um, drill and file to. And that's exactly how I'm going to do it. I'm going to use um, a drill to uh, drill some 
holes to start us off with then I'll use a little file just to uh, make them holes into a square but first thing I need to do is just mark mark into the plastic exactly where I'm going to be um, where I'm going to be cutting so if this computer was absolutely perfect I wouldn't be considering um, doing this but it's not a perfect example it is going to be a well hacked um, well it already is a well hacked example right I'll get my old trusty faithful drill out hopefully there's some charge in the battery and we'll need a couple of very fine a fine drill bit and something about the size of what we're actually going to be drilling which is about that is there anything else around that let's try that one that one's slightly better I think right got a couple of ways we can um, approach this we can use a very very small drill bit. What I'm going to use basically use is a pilot drill um, drill bit just to mark where basically the corners of the hole. Where's that other tiny tiny little drill bit I had? There it is. So I've got some very small drill bits in here. I'll get some of the tiny ones out because we might need them. There we go. What we're going to do, we'll use one of the small drill bits to just mark all four around edges of where we're going to file out to, and then we'll use a bigger drill bit just to basically take the most of the material out, and then we'll go in with a file and make the, the hole nice and square, or as square as we can make it, and then we'll um, have to look at actually mounting the uh, mounting the switch in there. Right. We'll start with um, we'll start with that tiny little one there, if it'll fit my uh, chuck. This is definitely not one for the purists, but like I said, this Amiga is already not stock, not stock, and it is Amiga, an Amiga that I use probably more than any of my others actually. So I want it exactly as. Hole. I think that's that battery going flat. We might just have enough juice in it because we don't. We said we're only drilling plastic. We don't need mega power. I think I need to recharge my battery. There we go. We just we just got that hole through on the last uh, on the last foray of that battery. Let me just um, swap my other battery in. It's amazing these batteries um, still work actually, because this um, this drill's about thirty about thirty years old. It's still got its original, um, its two original batteries with it. That one seems to still work. Right, we need a slightly bigger drill bit. And we will drill the centre of that out and then we can um, file it into the shape that we want it. And then we'll have to again go in there and just drill the mounting holes for the... Um, we'll have to drill then the mounting holes for the switch. First hole through. It's actually surprisingly tough that plastic. Right. In fact, I'm just going to swap to a different drill bit because I think that one might be a little on the blunt side.
just going to go back and the hole. There we are. So that's basically our our holes through. All we need to do now is make that an oblong rather than um, two holes next to each other. Just give you a quick look what it looks like um, at the moment if you can see there. So we've just got two holes drilled next to each other and it's now a case of going in with a little file. So we've got a tiny little um, I've got a file like that. And basically all we've got to do now is go in and file that into a little oblong Or as close to an oblong as we can um, as we can make it. Obviously, the neater you are with this, the uh, the neater you are with this, the better. But again, where we've done it, it's not going to be mega mega visible. Get in there. Wear it off now. Give it a quick. We're not quite there yet. We just need to take a little bit more uh, material out. But you can get an idea, basically, what we're uh, what we're going to achieve. In fact, what I'll do is I'll just pause the uh, pause the video. This might take me about 15 minutes just of a bit of filing and um, filing and fiddling, and then we'll come back as soon as we're ready to mark the switch up and actually fix the um, switch in position so um, back in a sec okay we're back and you see it takes a little bit of time but if we have a look in there we have our um, we have our slot for the switch mounted so basically it's now going to be a case of just finding exactly where we want to fit the swat the, the switch in the case now that feels good there what we're going to do is just grab a screwdriver I'm going to take the screws out of the switch so one out of there that one out of there and we can basically we can put the switch in position so we go all the way up like that or we can go all the way down basically what we want to do is we want to figure out where we actually want to mount the, um, the mount the switch now that feels good there That feels okay there, like that. So what I'm what I do, I want to basically hold the switch where I want it. So the switch is going to go there, and I'm going to have to even mark a drill through where the two holes for the mounting screws are going to go, and then we can screw the um, switch on from the um, outside. So I'm, hopefully I can get it to mark using this um, using this drill bit. I don't I see what I don't think I can do is get a marker pen um, through the holes. I think the two um, the two fine. Otherwise, what I do, I'll do is I just put a marker pen through them and then um, do it that way. I think what we'll have to do is use a very fine drill bit, put a fine drill bit through, and hopefully we can just scratch the plastic. I mean, we could actually do it from the outside. That might be even easier. And we'll just use the switch as a guide. So if we spin this over. put the switch where we actually want it so we're going to have it so it's as far down this way as we can have it in exactly that position there and so if I just move my, put the uh, I think I can just mark the uh, mark the plastic like this and it should be in about the right that's a pain that move then I know that holes right and we just hold the switch that move. That's it. There. 
and we've put a little mic on the plastic there right we've got two mics on the plastic so if we drill through those two places we should be right we should be right for the switch let's just double check if that holes there I think that's going to work right let's get the get the drill back in As I have decided, I'm not going to put the, um, in fact I'm going to drill through with this because I think this will hold in the truck. I have decided I'm not going to bother putting the modulator back in this. I'm going to put that in my, um, in my, one of my 1200s that's um, missing a working modulator. But um, what that does do is it frees up a little piece of the um, case at the back here, um, there. Which I mean, we could have mounted the disk drive switch in there, but I've actually got another use for that. Um, something else is going to get mounted in there, so um, that's basically why I selected where I selected here for the um, fire the switch. So that should work out quite nicely. We'll just drill two. Um, we'll drill two holes. First one. I'll try not to drill my finger because I did that many years ago and it hurts. We'll have to enlarge them holes ever so slightly. And then we'll do a quick trial fit of the switch and make sure we're happy of it before we um, look at putting the board back in and um, carrying on with this, this modification. There we go. Hopefully that should be the end of um, the use of the drill. Right now, let's have a look at seeing if this switch is actually going to fit. Let's take the original screws. Now it is going to be a bit tight with these screws, but I think this should should just be long enough. We might have to take make these holes a little bit bigger though. Yeah, I think we're going to have to just ream them holes out a little bit. That should do perfectly. You know, fortunately plastic's really soft so we can just use one of these um, screwdriver bits. Now we've got a hole and we'll just ream the, um, ream the hole out a little bit, make it a little bit bigger just to accept the screw. And the same with this side. There we go. Right. Now where's that other screw? There's the other screw. Let's just try one of those screws in the hole now. There we go. Perfect. We'll try that one in that hole. There we go. Right. Hopefully we can hold them in there. Flip it over. I'm just going to have to trim the little bits of plastic off the back of there but I think those should just be long enough if not we can always just ever so slightly countersink the heads so you don't really see the heads then we'll push them screws back through and we'll just try and deburr the plastic on that side there so you wouldn't have all this trouble if you use a toggle switch you'd literally drill the one hole deburr it and you'd be ready to go but I still think this is going to be a more elegant solution in the uh, in the long run you know those heads don't quite put, um, poke through so I'm going to very slightly countersink the outside case so them screws will sit in we could use very slightly longer screws but it's nice and thick the plastic there so it will take us just countersinking it in a little bit just find something I can do that with I might actually just use a um, Use a larger, use a larger drill bit. Can I just kick the switch over somewhere. Yeah, there we are. I got the switch back. Just with my hand, with in my fingers, I'm just going to ream a tiny bit of that out. Like I said, just so I can allow them screws to countersink in a little bit. I mean, I'll show you this in more detail when it's actually um, actually done, so you can actually see exactly what I've done. Try putting the 
some screws back in. They should just sit a little bit further into the hole now. Yeah, they do. Let's give them a quick try on the switch. May have to sink them in a little bit further, but I think that's going to work. And that first one went in and that second one went in lovely and that's it that's basically the switch mounted so the wheel up there you can flip the switch up and down and that's going to be our um, drive select if we look from the outside that's all we can see Hopefully you can you can make that out there. I think that's quite neat. And I said because it's hidden underneath that lip, you really really can't see it that well. Right, we're gonna have to whip that switch out. We'll get the um, we'll get the main board mounted back in the case, and then we'll take it from there. In fact, you don't need to um, see me just fiddling about with that. So I'll uh, I'll come back to you as soon as I've got the actual main board just mounted back down into this. Um, this case so back in a sec okay we're all back um, back in the case and what's super awesome is you can actually do it without taking the um, actually out taking the switch out which is um, quite nice I don't think there'd be any reason why that would actually can't be a problem but it is nice to know that you can just whip it out without having to um, take the switch out although like I say it's two screws and the whole switch will come out but actually to thinking about it um, that's the, going to be the sensible way of doing it if you ever want to take the board out. I'll have these wires reasonably short. They don't have to be long to go where they're going. Um, and if you wanted to remove the board, you just have to take them two screws out and take the switch out along with the um, along with the board and the um, drive cable. And this is the next thing we need to do. Basically, we need to make a little modification to um, to this drive cable. What we are doing. I will um, get the cable in place. It's basically we need to isolate and then um, split one of these um, connectors. Now let me just double check. I think I know which one it is. But, um, let me just double check the um, instructions first. Right. It is um, wire 10 basically. So what we need to do is we need to um, find wire 10 in here. Now the red line is pin 1. So basically we need to count in 10 from there. Take that wire out and split it. So let's do that now. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And that's 10 there. So if we just mark either side of it, and basically what we need to do, I'll get a little blade, um, we'll just break that cable free. In fact, do I need a blade or screw? Anything would do. This will do. Have got a, yeah. So what we want to do, let's just count that back in. No, there it is. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine yeah so we cut between nine and ten like that basically that's the um, that is the wire we want to isolate so we want to pull that wire out from the rest Just pull it up we should be able to um, break it away from the rest of the cables there we go so that's pin that's sorry that's wire 10 isolated and we'll just double check because we don't want to make a mistake and um, tap into the wrong wire so let's just um, double check our counting so we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and the wire that we brought out 10 so the next thing we need to do is we need to cut cut that wire and we need to add on a couple of extra little bits of wire to that so where's that where's that wire that I had before what have I done with it 
Oh, what the pig in hell have I done with the wire that I've just been using? You know, you don't move from one place. And what you've just, literally just been using, and it's sodding well disappeared. Sorry folks, I'll just be right back as soon as I've found what's happened to the wire. Sorry about that, I found it. Right, let's cut a piece of this out and we'll just use it to extend them cables on the, uh, them cables on the disk drive. So, let's pull a piece of this out from here. Okay, that'll do. We'll use that to um, extend these wires. They don't actually have to be extended very long. In fact, I'll use another piece, and then we can um, we can always cut them back shorter. I'd rather have them longer for us to start with, and then, we, like I said, we can cut them back shorter after, can't we? So we'll get a new another piece of this. Right there we go. That's what we're going to use to um, extend these. So what we need to do, we just strip off. We'll strip the ends of these and we'll strip the ends of these okay that's them stripped and twist them up we'll take the um, extension wires twist them on. So we're making a good mechanical joint first. Like that. And then we'll just solder that joint and we'll put a piece of heat shrink. A heat shrink over that just to uh, make it look nice and neat. There we go. Okay that's that soldered. Do the other one, and then we'll just heat shrink them up. Like I said, just to make them, um, just to make them look neater. Right. There we go. I'll solder that one up. Get a little bit of heat shrink on there just to make them um, make them look nice and neat. Right, where's my heat shrink now? Oh, it's down there. Right, what will look nice on that wire? I can use a little bit of this brown stuff, I think. I've got enough of this left. bits of heat shrink there. Right, I'll stick that on there. Oops, put that in there. Lay that down nice and flat and we can get the heat shrink to go over it. There we go, like that. We'll do the same on the other side and then we'll just shrink that down. There we go. So we've got the sh heat shrink right over those two places. We'll just need to shrink that down. Lighter here, this should do it. There we go, that's that one done. And that's that one done. So there we go. That is basically the modifications done to the drive cable. So if we get the um we get the Amiga back in and we can do the um we can do the final connecting up now. Right, so that's the Amiga back in. 
we've got our um, modified floppy drive cable now which we can plug basically we can plug that back in where it lives and then we can figure out how long we need these um, how long we need these wires so they're going to be comfortable so that that's plugged back in that's happy there we've got these two wires now and we've got those two wires so basically these wires are going to go to the changeover switch here so what we'll do we'll give them a little, a little bit of um, playroom like that we'll snip them off there we know we've got enough uh, we know we've got enough wire there then like that so we might just use a little bit of that in a minute um, I'm going to disconnect the switch and uh, we could try and solder the switch in position there but it's probably not a good idea we'll do the um, soldering just off the um, side so what I'll do I'll take them two screws that I um, fit up previously and we'll just take the switch actually out of the computer I'll have to take it to the edge of the desk to do this Okay. We'll take the like I said we'll take the switch back out. Perhaps I'll have to take that out to take the switch out because it is a bit tight, but oh no, I've just not undone that. There we go, we're out. So what we'll do move that to one side like that. We've got the switch there, and now where's my sheet of paper? Because what I did, it's rather small on the Ami Bay um, diagram, so I, um, which is basically where the PDF comes from. So I've blown it up a little bit, as we can see. As we can see there, this basically shows us how we how we connect the um, how we connect the switch up. So if we put the switch. In relation, basically, we look at the switch and we look there. We can see exactly um, exactly how how we're going to wire this switch up. So the the switch that I'm using is exactly the same as um, that there. So we've got we've got wire A, which is um, wire A connects to this the wire that comes off pin 10 of the drive header cable off the uh, motherboard so basically you've got this side that go, comes off the motherboard you've got this side that goes to the disk drive the side that comes off the motherboard here goes to position A on the switch so that's the first one we're going to uh, wire in because there's, basically there's two have direct wire, have direct connections the other two actually connect to different pins on the um, switch so let me grab, I'm going to put a little bit of heat shrink actually on the end of here because we will put some heat shrink on the um, on the switch as we do this let's see what we've got that's going to fit over uh, nicely over there that should do it actually there's something slightly bigger than that well that's a nice one I'm not really bothered what colour that we use it's just more to protect um, more to protect everything we don't want anything shorting out in the future We'll just cut cut off a little bit of um, heat shrink, and we'll double check what I said before. So wire A, which is wire A there, um, connect to the half of wire ten that goes to the A six hundred mainboard, which is this wire here. So we'll put a piece of um, heat shrink on it, and we'll just strip the end of that cable like that. We'll tin that up and we'll get that soldered as our first wire to the switch. Now where's my solder gun? Piece of solder. You come down here so you're not going to touch the case. There we go. Tin the wire up like that. We'll just tin the uh, tin the position on the switch that we're going to um, connect it to too. 
and it's just a case of bringing the two together. Hopefully, I mean, you can't see what I'm doing here, can you? Let's move you that way a little touch. Hopefully, you can see what we're doing. Right, so we've got the wire um, tinned up there. I'll just bring that into position. There we go, that's the first wire connected. We'll get the bit of heat shrink up that. And we'll just quickly shrink that into position. And we can find out what I've just done with that lighter. There it is. There we go. So that's the first one done. We'll do C next. So wire C goes to what I've connected as the grey wire there, which is the wire that goes to um, the sixth pin. It goes to um, basically the sixth pin along on the second row from this side of the um, pin header. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. I think it's pin 11, but don't quote me on that. But basically, like I said, if you go to this, the second row back, the row is nearest the front of the computer, and it's the sixth pin in. The wire that goes to that is the next wire you want to be um, looking at connecting, and that goes to position C on the switch. So we'll strip a little bit of that off. Like that, and get that tinned up. And tin that and tin that up. There we go. And again, we'll just add a little bit of extra. A little bit of solder to the um, point on the switch that we're soldering to. There we go. We need a little bit of um, heat shrink over that again. So that goes under there like that. And literally solder that on there like that. I should re in fact where is it? There they are. I'll bring my um, soldering uh, soldering gate in for this. It'll make life a little bit easier for us. There we go. Okay, that's that connected to um, there. We'll just pull the heat shrink around it, get that shrunk in position. That goes up there, that goes over there, like that. So we'll just put a, just heat that up, get that to shrink into position. What have I done with that lighter now? I've just used the lighter, haven't I, just to um, shrink that. So where the bloody hell's it gone? I didn't hear it drop to the floor or anything. I think we'll just have to use the heat from the um, the heat from the soldering iron because I don't know what I've done with that lighter. I mean, you can do this. It's just not as um, ideal as the lighter because it does mark the um, heat shrink a bit. But that's that's good enough. Get them shrunk down. There we go. That'll do. I prefer to do that with um, a lighter or a heat gun, but um, that's that's done the job anyway. Right, so we've only got two wires left to connect, and those are, and I've put it on the um, 
list of instructions. So we have got then um, point B, which basically point B. Let me see if I can get this switch so you can see it better. There we go. That's better, isn't it? You can actually see um, see the switch a bit better like that. Especially if I zoom you down a little bit. I mean, bring you across a little bit. Right. So we've got A there. Sorry, we've got um, A there going to the um, disk drive header. We've got C there going to this side. This this side of the um, pin header over there. It's pin. From this end, it's pin six, second back. Then we need to connect. Um, what did we just say? We're going to do um, pin B next, and now pin B is this wire that goes between the um, floppy drive on the header cable. And what pin B has to do? Pin B has to go from here. And it has to loop over and it has to connect to that um, connection there as well so it's going to be two little pieces of um, it'll be two pieces of wire this so we'll get this stripped off and I'll strip another little piece of um, wire off to do this with in fact we've got plenty of um, off cuts there haven't we so what have I done with my there they are so what we want to do we'll strip off a little bit more than we did um, last time because we're going to join two wires together basically so we've got plenty stripped off there. And grab another um, scrap of wire. We're not going to need all this, but we'll. It does make life a bit easier if you um, start with a big piece. And what we want to do, we want to twist those two wires together now. Sorry, you can't see what I'm doing here, but I'm just twisting the um, two wires together. put that piece of heat shrink over them and what we're going to do is we're going to solder those two wires together then we're going to solder them to that point on the switch there so first we'll just solder the two wires together there we go I'm just going to tin up the um, connection on the switch make life a little bit easier for us and then we're going to solder this to the switch like that okay that's soldered in place we'll pull that bit of um, heat shrink down over them connections and we'll just want to see if we can shrink that in place. In fact, I might just um, shrink them all, shrink them all into place. I can find what the hell I've done with that. In fact, what I'll do, I'm going to switch my heat. I'll switch my um, heat gun on, and we'll just use my heat gun to. Um, we'll use my heat gun to do it. Right, and now so we've got that onto the top, top connection there. So if we look at the um, diagram here, we've soldered it to that connection there so we need to run that wire that we brought off it there right down to that connection there which is that bottom the bottom connection on the switch over there we're going to do it fairly long so I do want to put a piece of heat shrink on this as well so we'll just cut it to about that again we'll just strip the end of that There we go, that's stripped. We can tin that up. Just add a little bit of um, heat shrink on there first. Let's see what we've got that's going to fit. I don't think we've got any of that blue left. We'll have to go with yellow. And cut a little piece of yellow. Put that over there like that. Just tin that wire up and we'll tin the... Um, In the connection on the switch we're going to connect it to. Just a bit of solder on there like that. And it's this point on the switch there. So we'll just tin that up. Bring this wire around. Let's 
solder that in position. And we can just bring that bit of heat shrink over just to make it neat and tidy. Pity I've run out of blue, but never mind. I do need to reorder some heat shrink because of certain sizes I'm running very low on. Okay, and then the final wire we need to do, which is this um, this blue one here, and that needs to go. If you look um, here, this is wire D we're looking at now, so it needs to go from this connection at the front here, and then that needs to loop to the final connection on the back of the switch there. So again, we're going to need to add a little bit of extra wire to it. I've got some um, some here, so we need to strip the end of that. There we go. Twist these two wires together. Like that. And we'll just tin up that connection there. That'll do. We'll add a little bit of heat shrink to that um, connection and we'll solder it in place and then we've got the last wire to connect and we're not far off all right so we'll put that oops that was still hot put that bit of heat shrink over there like that and literally all we need to do now is connect that wire on there. Sorry if I'm um, obscuring the shot a bit, but it is a bit a bit tricky. Just solder that onto there like that. There we go pull the um, heat shrink over it. it does just make the job look a little bit more professional if you heat shrink everything up and finally so we've got this last wire which we need to loop over and put on that connection over there so again we'll just uh, about what we had before about that should be fine we'll just stick a bit of heat shrink over there like that we'll strip the end There we go, turn that up and we'll get it connected, we'll get it connected to the switch. Okay, let's turn that and like I said we'll get it connected to the switch. Bring that in, that's tinned, I'll just tin that connection up on the switch, there we go, that should be the final wire to solder, I'm just sorry, we'll just bring it in a little bit, in fact I might just have to use my tweezers to um, hold that, where have my tweezers gone, there they are, they can be very handy little tweezers like this for when you're doing um, fine soldering work, just bring that wire into position and that's soldered in place let's hold it a sec there we go that's the final wire connected I'll just get that go on up you come hold that like that we just need to get this bit of um, heat shrink up and over there 
we can put the heat shrink over the final wire it's going to be a bit tricky because it's a bit of a bit tight now but um, it will make it look a lot a lot neater Final bit, just push it down there. There we go, that's all the wires with a bit of heat shrink over them. And I'm just going to get the um, get the hot air on that just to shrink them down. Don't need to be mega hot for this, just want to make it all look nice and neat, really. There we go, they're all shrunk down nicely. Ooh. Okay, let's get you zoomed out a little bit. Oops. So basically, that is the mod. We'll get this switch uh, mounted back in position, and then we'll give this thing a test. But well, basically, that that is the mod there. That's um, that's done. Let's uh, let's get the switch mounted back in the computer. screw in there. It's going to be a little bit tight around the um, around the um, disk drive connections from where I've got the um, switch mounted but I'm not too worried about that. It's There's enough room. It's just going to be a bit cosy. And that's the switch screwed screwed into position. Yep, quite happy with that. Right, so what we need to do, push them back, we need to get that connection back on there like that. And that's basically it, that's the, that's the switch mounted there. We need to reinstate the, um, the GoTech in there like that. So what I'll do, I won't bore you, bore you with me putting the GoTech back in and um, all that. Um, I'll pause the video now, I'll just get the GoTech wired back in. I'll get the keyboard, I'm not going to put the, everything back together because we're going to be going back in here, but I'll get the keyboard connected back on and what have you. And I'll get my external floppy drive um, hooked up and we'll, um, we'll take it from there and we'll um, see if this thing's actually going to do what it's meant to do. So, uh, back in a sec. Okay, we're back and as you can see I've got all the computer... Um, fully set up again. Now I have had to swap disk drives out, uh, that was the disk drive I was initially attending to use and uh, actually it turns out it's faulty. Um, that did used to work fine, it's the one I've used to use with my um, 1200 but I've just dug it out and um, it's not reading disks anymore. Fortunately I did have this drive as well, now this one's in manky condition but it does have a few issues with it, um, I think it could do with a really good service itself but it does at least read um, it does at least read discs so we can use this for um, just showing that the system's working basically I've got the I've got it all set up I've got the switch in the down position which means um, the way I've got it set up with it down towards the front of the keyboard it should mean that the external drive is the boot drive so what we'll do we'll switch the computer on I'll just get you up onto the screen a little bit so you, but so you can still see the um, floppy drives I've just got a random I don't even I'm not even sure what's on it um, Amiga DOS guide I, I just literally just picked a random disk up um, that's been looked at like I say I think it's clean I think this should boot so uh, well I know this should boot so I just tried it in another Amiga um, but we'll stick that in the drive as you can hear And well, it, well, it wants this disc to be loaded through workbench, but you can see, you know, it, it has booted the disc. 
Um, so, yo, know, that that basically does work. We can now boot um, boot with that disc, that drive as um, DF0. So what I'll do is I'll shut off. And I'll flick the switch into the other's position. So we flick it into the up position. And I take um, a USB stick. Stick my USB stick in now. I know that um, disc one on here is workbench, so uh, we might as well just load that so I know I know what's on it. So if I um, switch the computer back on now. And it should now boot workbench, but it'll boot workbench from the um, from the GoTech. You can see the floppy drive lights come on on the computer there but there's got no lights on on the um, external floppy drive and said hopefully uh, workbench should um, workbench should boot up now I'm not sure what's on some of these other um, some of these other discs to be fair so I wonder if this one's one that'll boot might might just try another disc after but I'm not um so I'm not sure what's on a lot of these discs, and I'm not putting any of my good, you know, like my good original games or anything in this drive before these this drive's been um, locked out. Because obviously it's got some issue with it. But as you can see, that's booted, and that's booted off the um, GoTech. I'll switch back off again. I'll just take that out so, can, so it's easy to get to the switch. I'll flick the switch back down into the bottom position. I'll switch the computer back on. I'm not sure of the, what discs we can um, try on this. Once we've sorted these drives out properly, so I'm not worried about what discs I put in them. But I know the bottom drive there has been cleaned; it's just stopped working. Um, let's try this. You can see it's trying to load that straight away. I can see. see that's booting straight off the um, drive there so I don't know what's going to come up because I don't know what's what that disc is but if it's anything it might be a very good disc but it's proved the point you know there we go gadge software I haven't got a clue what this is but it's proved the point anyway, and it's um, that's all. All I really wanted to do was just prove that the um, the external you can now boot off an external um, floppy drive. Flick the switch, and you can boot off the um, internal GoTech. So I think that <coughs> excuse me, I think that's going to be about it for this video. I um, hope you enjoyed that little walkthrough on this uh, modification. So I hope some people might find that um, useful anyway for your own um, Amiga 600. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there for now. So um, thanks for watching and goodbye.